is equal to me and you because love times two. Greetings, everybody. We are back for more LCK here live at Lull Park. It is me, Valdez, with one very special guest, the Snack himself. How is it uh, for you now that you're back here on the desk with us? How are you feeling today? Taking some time away from telling people to play Annie. So That's good. Now I'm here to see KT <laughs> uh -huh. take on On My Life. You must be feeling pretty good about KT's chances today. Yeah, I mean, I just got to see the World Finals yeah. earlier in the week. <laughs> yeah. Good old Jin Air. Should have won that one too. Uh, I don't the know server went down for about four hours <laughs> right before the match started. Yeah. Didn't come back up until a couple hours later. So, I mean, that's just the level of power that occurred in that series. But I'm yeah. actually looking forward to seeing them play here today. I'm really excited to get to watch Prey play live. He's right behind me. Glad to have yeah, him back in the is. LCK. He's back there somewhere backstage. And uh, it's good to have him back. A legend, a guy that has... Uh, Won many titles uh, here in Korea and abroad, so good to have him back. Of course, he will be up against Hama Life, him and his team. So Hama coming out first time, they did not look good at all. That's uh, one way to put it. It was pretty bad, and we're hoping that they can kind of wrap things up and come back and give us something better because uh, they honestly did not come out here with a great start. And one of the things I, I'm looking forward to seeing here actually today as well is Will the Korean meta start getting shaken up a bit? Yesterday, Karthus ended up coming out finally. Yeah. You know, I mean, he just got <laughs> nerfed too, so a little bit slow on that. But Korea's, I've been watching some of the drafts, and I feel like it's very slow to adapt. And I'm waiting to see if maybe any innovation ends up popping up or if the picks and the bans end up remaining mostly the same. Taking a look at the standings, not too much has really occurred, though. Yeah, it's pretty early on. Only a couple of teams have played two games. You see Gen G and Gen Air there. Uh, Gen Air, very unfortunate that uh, they did lose that one to SKT. You can see that we do actually have a streak column. So next to them, they are the only team currently on a streak. Uh, two losses in a row. And none of the other teams just yet, but KT could get on that streak with two wins in a row. They do start off here with a good start. Well. So. Yeah. And uh, guys, we are just about ready to hop into another VCR. Some videos here with some trash talk, so let's see what they had to say. KT에 프레이 선수가 들어왔는데 SK 탑3 안에 드는 건데 아무래도 이제 쌓아둔 커리어와 이름값이 있기 때문에 번복도 할수 있는구나 부럽네요. 찾아주는 거잖아요. KT 그 원딜이란 자리가 그런 부담이 부담이 없을 수 없는 자리. 마음을 좀 단단히 먹고 오긴 했는데 굉장히 재밌을 것 같아요. 근데 잘해가지고 그 두꺼비를 <웃음> 원딜러들끼리 그 얼굴 대결 <웃음> 그 얼굴 대결 한번 보고 싶습니다. 아 그거는 이제 종인이 형이 하면은 저는 언제든지 오토콜입니다. 다이어트여가지고 턱이 안 좋겠는데. 상은아 이런 거 다시 하지 마라 또. 좋아요. <웃음> 근데 제가 들어오기 전부터 뭐 이렇게 어떠냐 약간 이런 눈꽃이 이제 회정이 어떠냐 이렇게 물어보기도 했었는데 뭐 되게 뭐 유쾌하기도 하고 그냥 잘 맞춰가고 있는 것 같아요. 눈꽃은 잘 맞는 선수를 본 적이 없기 때문에 안 맞길 바랍니다. 어쩌면 그렇게 못하진 않던데 저만 잘하면은 뭐 상혁이 정도는. 아, 종인이 형이 형 먼저 올라갈게 이러더라고요. 근데 항상 짓밟고 올라갔어요. 저는 밟혔거든요. 
이번에는 한번 오랜만에 오셨는데 아래에서부터 한번 다시 시작하셨으면 좋을 것 같습니다. 나락도 한번 가보셔야죠. 진짜 관심이 많이 필요한 친구라서 관심을 많이 줬으면 좋겠어요. 일단 몸 진해오전은 이겼겠죠, 지금? 그 <웃음> 진해오전은 이겼으니까 기세 타고 하나까지 2대0 알겠습니다. 어, 일단은 2대1 저희의 승리입니다. 2대0으로 하면은 프레이 형이 이제 또 들어간 또 맛이 없기 때문에 특별히 1세트 좋습니다. <웃음> 하나 생명이 동부의 왕뭐 이런 느낌이었는데 계속 그 자리에 있는 것도 괜찮으실 것 같고 저희는 이제 서쪽으로 갈 때가 돼서 저희가 나이가 있어서 철새라서 왼쪽으로 좀 가야 돼요. KT가 좀 <웃음> 노인정이라서 종인 형도 이제 들어오고 프레이님만 바뀐 거지 다른 라인이 바뀐 건 아니잖아요. 저희가 그래도 KT 이겼었고 둘다 믿습니다. 프레이 <웃음> 정원에 함께 하겠습니다. <웃음> 화이팅 <웃음> 기대 타서 높은 곳 올라가 보도록 하겠습니다. 하나 생명 화이팅. Well, that was actually a lot of fun there already. The two charismatic 80 carries going back and forth. Bray and Sangyun. And, uh, well, the last time these teams did meet up, of course, Hama did do well. But that was before Bray was in the lineup. So let's see if things can change here as we do go into this matchup, Ellis. Yeah, and Bray coming into the lineup is really one of the main focal points for a lot of people this season as a lot of people were wondering, well, <laughs> what was KT going to do coming into summer? And they managed to convince Prey to come out of retirement. And he is a world elite level 80 carry, and so it's a massive upgrade for the team. And we can probably bet that he'll have a pretty big influence in the games here tonight. This guy was watching baseball. He couldn't stand it. Came down, started watching some LZK, gave us the good toad face. Thank you very much. Well, we are going into this one. Handsome, long time no see. Song Yun versus Prey. But who's going to be the winner? I would put my money on KT, actually, even though it is kind of the senior citizen center. Uh, score was uh, highlighting lots of veterans, but they are strong ones, especially with Prey, to back them up. So I'm excited to see if, especially with Hanwha, uh, trying to. Uh, kind of getting off to a rough start here at the beginning of summer. I think this is KT's moment to uh, step on top of them and move up. Well, Hanwha Life probably going to have their work cut out for them this series, which probably isn't something I would have expected to be saying, especially in spring. Yeah. But the team is actually really different now, just with the slight change. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to try to take on KT here. and. Again, something I alluded to earlier, what is the drafts going to have in store? Because I think if everything's straight up, KT on paper should have the edge. Absolutely. Uh, it does feel that way. We are going to have to wait and see what kind of roster they do field as well. The last time around, we saw King and, and Umti for both games, I do believe. And uh, for the side of Hama Life, we had Ujin Starp and then Bono come in and didn't really change up much, so these two teams definitely have some deeper rosters and the ability to sub in some players, so we'll have to wait for that one. We're taking a look at some comparative stats here, but of course, with Hama going down 0-2 to two and KT taking the 2-0, not really much to look at so far in terms of the stats, so don't read too much into this just yet, guys. And the stats, they only got two games. Going, or a couple yeah. of games going for them. Oh, and here we go. We get to see the starting lineup. It will be Umti in the jungle position as well as Kingan in the top. Yeah, looking over at Hanwha, we have Soan starting alongside of Bono. So no Tall and no Mujin to start off here. Going to be using their younger lineup, I, I do believe. And we'll have to wait and see if this little change up here to start off can get them off to a good start. Having them line up here. These guys, the kings of the east, as uh, Score was putting them. That's kind of the Korean meme where there's the west side of the standings board and the east side. 
And if you're sixth place, you're at the top of the, the east side, the right side of the standing. So they were the kings of the east. Whereas these guys, they were also in the east side the last yeah. time around. But uh, Score said that it's time now for them to move over to the west, like birds that migrate. You know, and interestingly enough, I'm actually surprised that Score hasn't or isn't starting. We just saw him in the intro video, uh, which I would have expected to actually see him in the lineup, but it does seem that he will be subbing for today at least, and Umti is going to be starting out here. They're about to take their seats, then we'll hop into the pick ban. Yeah, Umti not doing so bad the last time around, showed some good aggression as you would expect from him, but definitely was kind of a team effort. I felt like Prey was doing a good job carrying in some of the earlier games, whereas on this side, there wasn't really much to talk about. Hamalai kind of got dumped on in pretty much every lane the last time around when they did go up against Sandbox. Obviously, Sandbox is a very strong team. Tomorrow, actually, Sandbox versus King Zone. That's a game yeah. you guys are going to want to catch. It's going to be LS with Atlas casting that one. Definitely mark that one on your calendar. Those two teams currently 2-0 and in games and 1-0 in matches and looking good. But we are going to have to go through this one first, KT versus Hanwha Light. Well, let's see what they have in store for the pick ban. We're going to jump into that in just a second. It's still very early on in the split, so it's very difficult to try to assess maybe what direction either team would be trying to go as we jump into it. And the meta, like I was mentioning earlier, and I, I keep talking about it because it, it's such a defining characteristic, it actually seems for one of the issues that Korean teams have been having, even through MSI. Yeah, a lot of the Korean teams liking to hold on to what they know and kind of the, the past metas. But this game changes up a lot with every patch. You got to be on the balls of your feet and kind of be ready to change at any moment. But these Korean teams not necessarily good at that. But we are going to see the Pike ban come out yeah. first. Kingen is definitely capable of playing it. Everyone can thank Wonder for that meta pick now being prevalent. KT, you're gonna ban Olaf. It's a Bono target ban. This guy loves his Olaf. Um, I know how you feel about Olaf as a champion, <laughs> but I think in this case, you even see the grin there from Bono. He will pick up one target ban. Nico, interestingly, being banned away on blue side, she is able to be flexed, which is quite powerful. And she's also extremely versatile, given that she can go AD or AP depending on what you need her to do. So a little bit surprising to see her banned away on blue. This does mean that Yumi, so far as making it through the ban phase, will KT be the one to ban her? Word around the street says that Yumi is not allowed through most of the time. Yeah, we did see her yesterday, but it got kind of dumpstered by a Victor going frost mancing, kind of just ignoring it, just pushing the lane and then leaving. Instead of getting poked out. Lee Sin. Now banned away. There's a lot of power picks still remaining. Silas, Rise, Yumi, A Atrox. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> there he Speaking is. Speaking of which. Atrox finally banned away there as the last ban. <laughs> and so a lot of options open. And seeing Atrox banned away is a little bit surprising because there's wow. so many champions that can actually answer him that are still open and available. Aurelia picked up, and maybe KT's thinking that's going to be top Aurelia. We saw the hover on the Renekton, now hovering Fiora, and there's the cat everyone loves to hate. I'm, I'm just kind of interested in the fact that they first picked the Aurelia with all of the other big picks, especially yeah. Silas and Yumi. I mean, both of these picks are being said to be very OP, especially in pro play with the Yumi in particular. Well, they pair it with Sivir blind, perhaps... Ooh. Not going to be the case. Skarner's actually going to be picked up early, and this is really showing their hand. So they're going to go very deep into the engage spectrum, and that allows Hanwha Life, in theory, to recalibrate their draft choices and just tr sort of try to answer it. So now if you're Hanwha Life, Aurelia, in theory, can be flexed, so they don't necessarily need to show it early. They could just go jungle support, jungle AD here, and that would be fine. It looks like it's going to be Lux. Gonna probably be Lux support accompanied with the Callista. That's 
pretty interesting that they do go for that one. Didn't want to pick up the Rek'Sai into the Skarner, but they're going to forego their jungle choice entirely, especially with already three big jungle bands that can be dangerous, but we will see the Ezreal Yumi lane into uh, the K KT side. It's an extremely safe lane. It's going to be a little difficult for Hanwha to impact the Ezreal. Early on and in the later stages of the game, there's going to be a lot of versatility there with the Yumi. Now we're entering into the second ban phase, so you mostly want to target things that can reach your backline. It looks like Gragas will be the initial ban for KT. And this is a little bit difficult now if you're Hanwha Life because the top and mid lane is still being concealed from KT and you don't know where you're going to put your Aurelia yet, so you're going to handle a lot of aspects. So with the Fiora ban, I wonder if Renekton will just accompany it next and then they'll plant the Aurelia up in top lane. Yeah, especially with the hover we saw from the side of KT, definitely some mind games going on there. Uh, could draw out that ban, as you were saying, in particular, but they take away one jungler and then they take away Rise, another one of those big power picks you were mentioning. Uh, just don't want to let that accompany the Aurelia in the solo lanes for the side of Hanwha Life. I don't think that you have to be really that worried about Silas right now. There's not too many key ultimates and there's still the way to draft around him. So it would actually be sur Well, <laughs> like a former coach, by the way. I just want to point that out. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you're, you're looking at it. Lux is obviously strong. Callista can offer a, a, a type of engage, but you don't really have a realistic way of engaging onto KT's lineup. And then Aurelia is so-so for Silas. And with the options still remaining, I, I don't think that it needed to be that big of a concern. And now this will be the Akali coming in. It can be flexed mid and top. And so now Hanwha Life has to basically decide how they want to approach the Aurelia situation. And I'm thinking that it's just going to be planted up in top lane. Especially for so on. He's definitely a guy that could jump onto it. They're hovering the Jarvin in terms of tier list, definitely up there for the junglers, but kind of interesting to pick it up here. It makes very little sense to me on paper. Ezreal and Yumi are going to be attached at the hip. He can arcane shift out of the Cataclysm. Akali has ways of getting out of it. The Shroud is definitely going to be problematic. And the enemy team is already coming into you and wanting to pull one of your primary carries back. So the Jarvin is a little bit bewildering to me. And now the LeBlanc, now that's a champion that can get access to the backline. It can approach from many angles, can create its own flanks almost on a whim and definitely a good pick against some of the champions that KT does have. Ooh. But now <laughs> Jax gonna be coming in to answer the Aurelia. <laughs> and so now KT they have two really good lanes, and they have a lot more gears available to them than Hanwha Life has. And so now if you're looking at this and you're a Hanwha Life fan, your laners have to get significantly ahead. Because if this game goes to three items, sure, Aurelia is a monster and she's really strong, and Callista's no slouch either. They don't quite go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champions on KT. Their champions are just so much more powerful three items forward. And the gears that I talked about, the engage with the Skarner, the flexibility that the Jax has, the Yumi ultimate, the repositioning with the Ezreal, everything is too problematic for Hanwha to handle. I like that Skarner priority. We saw it worked to very good uh, stuff the other day, uh, just before, just flashing on in and catching one of the squishies or pretty much anyone and then forcing it into a 5v4. And taking a look at the team composition, Callista LeBlanc, Lux, J4, and Irelia. There's going to need to be quite a bit of focus, and Bono's going to have his work cut out for them this game because all of the lanes are going to want his help. We'll see if he can actually help. Bot lane is not going to be great. It's going to be hard to stomp onto the Akali. Maybe some top lane focus. We'll have to wait and see. Jax, Skarner, Akali, Ezreal, and Yumi. Basically, they just want to weather the storm early on, but Jax can obviously go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the early stages. Yeah, so guys, we're just about ready to hop into game number one. Hanwha Life Esports up against KT Rolster. Let's do it. Well, 
KT fans coming out here in throngs once again, especially for that prey player that everybody knows and loves. We have Guardian here for the side of the Lux. We saw yesterday that it wasn't aftershock, but the unsealed spell book taken the one time. And now we have another summon or uh, rune choice coming in here. It's like a very safe opening by both teams. Many under the Skarner perhaps going to be starting on the right hand side. They're just going to get the Spire share the gold. 30 gold start right there. Other than that, nothing too exciting happening here in the early stages. Looking like it might just be a leashless start for KT and for Hanwha Life as well. So we're going to get right into the action. And Bono is going to need to help out the Aurelia first and foremost in the top lane because if Jack starts snowballing, it can reach a point where he can just 1v2. That's not something they want to have happening. It's definitely not ideal. We're once again getting a look here down in the bottom lane at what the, uh, the different choices are here in the runes. And the Guardian is definitely very interesting. We saw how Lux's shield uh, yesterday was doing some insane stuff, especially in the late game. And instead of trying to stay alive with the Aftershock, she just says, I'm just going to be a, a big time shield bot and make sure that nobody on my team dies. Definitely a powerful support pick right now in the current meta. Right now, they're just trying to shove the Ezreal and the Yumi in. And Bono, he's looking to make something happen very early on. This is a two buff clear into an invade, and he's gonna spot Umti out. He doesn't have smite, he can't go for anything there. Clack comes down, already pings were happening when the Spire was taken, but either way, just gonna move over to the Raptors. Very aggressive here is Bono. Just trying to do whatever he can. To and this is actually a really good decision by Umti that I want to point out. Normally one might think that Skarner could just try to go for a full clear, but due to the dynamic of the middle lane matchup, LeBlanc's always going to have priority early on. She can stand left centric on her side of the lane and invade with Bono, which could have ended up resulting in Umti losing his red buff, and perhaps even his raptor camp, because of the way that mid lane early prio could work. And so Umti foregoing his Gromp camp in Wolves and electing to immediately go over to the left-hand side is quite good. It's looking to avoid that entirely. And now with the push down here on the bottom side, you see tons of pings by Bono onto the Scuttle Crab, saying that Umti's probably here, but they're too late. As Umti will snatch it away and get away. This is a really good position right now. If you're the Skarner, you have a direct line pathing back towards the left-hand side of the map, which is where you're going to want to be on the rubber band golem camp will eventually respawn. And it's around the timing that Jax would maybe just like to have some coverage. So everything is going quite well for KT early on here. Lava, he still has two corrupting potions, so don't let his HP and mana bar confuse you about this current lane state. Yeah, he's doing just fine. Mention the focus up towards the top lane. Bono just going to make his way through the scuttle and hang around the top side. Pings on where those wards could be. Let's see if he actually does make try to make a play up here. You can see so on trying to beat him into it and actually taking a fantastic trade over the Jax here. And you can see this is the timing where Jax has a really big wave and so if he died right here to a Jarvan gank, it would allow Sohan to create a permanent freeze in front of the turret due to the size of the minion wave and how many spellcasters exist. Yeah. And that could be catastrophic because then Jax has to look on, and if he teleports, he could just end up getting reganked, and then suddenly top lane's actually just over. Two, three level gap, and that's the end of the game. And so Skarner's pathing, it lines up accordingly to the way that the top lane state will play out. It allows Jax to get the crash, get the recall he's looking for, and now he's going to be in the driver's seat as Skarner is pathing Ooh. to the golem. James on a BDD, and he gets the knockup here, but he's still in the shroud. Goes for that shuriken, but flashes forward, and the ignite will finish it off. First blood will already go to lava. And this is really good for them. Getting the LeBlanc rolling and putting the Akali behind is really good right now because the center of the map is 
going to be able to sort of control the side lanes, but also having the priority permanently in mid for that Infernal Dragon is going to be really big for Hanwha Life because quite literally every champion on their team benefits from it. We take a look at the replay, and you can see what's going on here is BDD, he wants this final crash before the wave. Uh, before he would end up looking for his recall, and they just get everything out of him. They do have to expend summoners. I'll probably get him, and I got nice him. Nice nice yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. Let's push together. So, I, I was just impressed that he was able to just hop right on top of him with the distortion and lands the chains. Uh, not something that every LeBlanc player can do, but Lava definitely one of these well-known guys here in the LCK for his LeBlanc. Now at this point, the Lost Chapter is completed for the LeBlanc, so her sustain is going to be absolutely fantastic. Just confirming that the Infernal Dragon has not been taken yet. Skarner still level 5, he does have his Predator Shoes, not quite level 6 yet. I would expect that the, the first gank would most likely end up occurring in the top lane for the Skarner. Although, if Lava's pushed up a little bit too far, something could definitely happen down there. It's really difficult to gank the Kalista and the Lux when you have Ezreal Yumi. There. There's just no GG in the lane unless Yumi hits 6 and they somehow are able to go super aggressive on that one. But very unlikely, as you mentioned. Certainly the top lane is where both teams are going to want to focus for the ganks. But so far, just looking at level 6, we saw that Bono hit it first. Did pick up that assist in the mid lane. And we talked about that priority in the mid lane and then pushing with the Lux, or not the Lux, the LeBlanc and the Jarvan. Already you can see Lava getting forward here and aggressive in the jungle, putting down that control ward, helping out his jungler. BDD continuing to feel the pressure here in mid. Bono now. Looking to come in and get intel on Umti. Umti is not quite six yet. They did see him though. The control ward there up at the river, uh, at the top side, was able to see him coming in down the bottom lane at the same time. We saw the final chapter blown here by Yumi and a flash by D to get out of dodge. So doing well in the Yumi lane at least. Yeah. And Yumi and Ezreal, they're just getting further and further ahead. Kalista going to have to end up missing out on this whole wave. This is also going to be a plate going down for KT. I, I, I even like the efficiency with which they back, you know, just doing a little bit of damage. Yumi does the rest of it, and then Ezreal starts the back. You just attach with Yumi. You're going back right away. Pretty good stuff here. You can see Umti actually didn't even want to clear out the control ward right there. Didn't want to risk that maybe Jarvan was right over the side of the wall and then Key able to follow up with CC and then suddenly you end up dying, give away the Infernal Drake. Doesn't want to risk it. You can see part of Lux's power is even she's leading the charge, has her allies behind her, of course, but can get the vision with oh, man. Predator here is going to be blown. They're looking for Key, but yeah. a great his call is going to get her out of dodge right on time to save her life. And that's the situation I was talking about earlier where it's really hard to gank Callista and Lux because the ultimate from Callista can just come in, pull her right out of harm's way, but alternatively she can just hit the binding and then everything stops. So a yeah. little bit unfortunate there for KT. And I should also note that Soan is doing a fantastic job up here in this top lane against Kingan. This isn't the way that you would have envisioned the top lane playing out, but you can see right now Bono down in here in bottom lane, he's looking to make something potentially happen, but Skarner is just on the horizon. Doesn't look like they know that Bono's here, but MT heading up towards the mid lane. It's just gonna chill for a while. It's both of the teams kind of just feeling each other out and spotting the junglers here. Looks like KT actually wants to start the Infernal Dragon. And I don't think Hanwha Life They're gonna check knows it out. or cares. Lux might try to go for an ultimate. Oh, never mind. They're okay. gonna commit to the- Yeah, TP uh, coming in. the dragon. 
lane. Not what? going for that one. The binding is coming in. They have a huge amount of damage with the Aurelia and Lux. But final chapter coming out here. And Kingan in the back line, 1v5 on the Jax, but he is going way too far. Bates BDD into it as well, who has the Shuriken over the wall. And Hanma Life will get the two kills and the Infernal Drake on top of it. <laughs> I'm a little bit perplexed. <laughs> my Welcome back to the LCK. Well, I'm glad to be back. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, I, I'm waiting for the replay to try to dissect that one. Let's take a look here. So you'll notice that uh, Skarner... Oh, okay. So he doesn't actually have Smite available unless this is a replay bug, which I don't think that it is. So they can't actually commit to just smiting the dragon. But still, I think they have enough damage to actually burst it down before Jarvan would have been able to come into range unless they think that Lux can steal it away, but a lot of chaos is unfolding. Unreal Life managed to get a lot done with the teleport. Kingan, he followed suit, but wasn't quite able to do anything on his own, and so yeah. Infernal Dragon and a big swing goes over to Hanwha. It's definitely a very awkward fight for KT. They kind of like got caught with their pants down at the dragon. They're like, oh crap, we gotta run. And, uh... Then the Skarner just got bursted down without even getting his ultimate off. Kingdom by himself, 1v5. Not exactly the uh, clean fight you were looking for. So Hanma Life, we were saying they were kind of the underdogs coming into this one, but now they're up 2k, and they have an Infernal Drake already. So anything's possible from here. And the good thing for them is that an Ocean spawning next, so they have the ability to just, in theory, forego it and just lock the game state the way that it is with their Infernal. and. This is the exact kind of position that we talked about in the pick band. They need to get ahead. The Infernal Drake's going to help with that. The kills, everything is going well for them. Looking like they're going to get a Herald. Still a minute and a half remaining on plate. So this should be able to be converted into even more gold. And I think that if you're looking for where do you accelerate, I think it's the Aurelia on top. It does feel like that, especially after the fight and the way it went. You notice that the pushing they had down in the bottom lane allows... Uh, Sang Yun and Kita unlock and head up towards that Rift Herald just in case KT wanted to challenge there. Hama Life, thankfully, one of our teams that likes to get aggressive with objectives and just in the game in general, trying to go for plays. So, not wasting any time here. They're going to use it before 14 minutes, get a couple of plates, and not actually going to go for the Aurelia. They're going to try to drop this onto the LeBlanc for Lava in mid lane. And the lane state was really good in mid relative to Jarvan's proximity, and so. With the Cannon Minion and the Herald, they have a lot of fodder. It's very safe to plant it down there. And now Bono going to move up into the top lane. And so on. Pushing the wave back into Kingen. He's doing really well in that lane and now. It's definitely going to hit that Trinity Force first. Looks like he is down a level somehow. Kind of interesting that this happened, but... Getting good trades either way with his extra sheen that he's got on top of everything. Here comes Bono. Just going to poke him with his stick. And uh, get a couple of plates. White as well when there's about 10 seconds left. Let's see if they can rush this one down. Oh, it's going to be close. And it looks like they will get it. Nice. That's really nice. And you, you had LeBlanc even rotating up to aid with any pressure if it be necessary. And... So right now, almost a 3,000 gold advantage for a Hanwha life, and it's also in the places where you want it to be, the Aurelia and the LeBlanc. The one lane where you could say that they're having a little bit of trouble is the bottom lane against the Ezreal and the Yumi, and that's going to be the saving grace for KT later on in the match. And we'll see if Frey, with his two items on the Ezreal, can somehow help carry his team. Definitely a little bit of a savior for KT fans, no doubt, having this uh, veteran player so well loved in the community trying to come back. But let's see if he can actually do it here. Have a Yumi on his back to help. We saw the gold from the plates, and almost 1,000 gold ahead from those plates was on the life, so doing pretty good with those. At this point. On Wall Life, looking to just raise the mid tier one turret here. Not going to be able to, but I mean, it's all but dead at this point. It has basically one auto attack remaining from almost any champion. 
Yeah, it's kind of interesting, you know, that's the build-up from Lava getting the kill early on onto Akali, then the Rift Herald, and then just BDD not in the lane to catch the wave on that last one, so a nice extra chunk, and that would be a fantastic first turret to get in the mid lane, and then maybe even add the top lane to it. Another chain is going to come in here. Lava not looking for it yet, but the flash forward nearly catches him there with the binding. May have been able to finish off BDD had it landed. Yeah, he definitely would have been able to had that binding landed. So, really like how aggressive Key was just being right there with the Lux. And had they killed Akali, definitely would have demanded that Umti stick around in mid lane. So, indirectly takes pressure off everything else on the map. And Right now, Zoan, he's going to raise the top tier one. And the gold lead continues to increase in favor of Han Walleye. As KT are... They're waiting. They are... Uh, they're, they're waiting. And yeah. with the Ocean Drake coming up, it's not like they're pressured to fight with Han Life over, say, a Mountain or an Infernal. And so now the goal for them is to allow the game to enter into a lull state and try to make it to three items. Because Hanwha Life, they don't actually have wave clear. They don't really have siege. And so team compositions like this, they have a reliance on Baron in order to end the game. But without a mountain dragon to accelerate the speed at which you can do it, it's going to be a little bit difficult to do it at 20, 22, 23 minutes, which means that we're at least destined to likely get to two and a half items which could mean that the grass might be a little bit greener for KT. Waiting in the brush here. The brush camp is not going to catch Sohan off guard. Uh oh. Although, he was thinking about it, wanted to challenge, go into that dual mode with King. And little did he know a friend was waiting in the sides. So, Ocean Drake will be started here by the Jarvan. Wants to get that off, maybe they can roll a higher Drake now that they have very good control of this game, and they're actually going to roll another Infernal. And if people are wondering, well, why isn't Aurelia walking up to the Jax? She has the Trinity Force. It's because Jax's story isn't congruent with his behavior the whole game. Why is a Jax who doesn't have a completed Trinity Force arbitrarily this far up in the lane by himself when for the first 16 minutes of the game he's been playing defensively, playing back, playing scared of the Aurelia, always being cautious. Doesn't take a genius to know that there might be the uh, the cheater jungler. Yeah, somewhere in cheater first jungler. <laughs> yeah. It's true. These pro players, they got a good read on the situation. But he was not going to bite the bait that time around. And so far, this Skarner, that's was prioritized heavily in the draft. It was second pick after the Yumi. Uh, hasn't done much. Died at the Drake the first time around. I don't think I actually saw him use his ultimate after that. So far, on the side of Hanwha Life, he has, well, they have just one QSS that's going to be on the LeBlanc so far. We'll have to wait and see who else will pick that up. Well, open Dragon was picked up by Hanwha. And they did manage to have uh, Fortune be on their side as Infernal Dragon will be coming up next. So three and a half minutes until that happens, which does mean that the itemization will still favor them for that fight for the time being. And with double Infernal Drake, that's, that's such a powerful accelerant that even the natural base scaling and itemization scaling for KT it won't really matter as much as it should have at around the three item mark. And so now, Prey, I mean, he's gonna have to do what they brought him in to do yeah. if KT's still gonna wanna have a chance in this game. Lava getting aggressive, knows that he has a gigantic leash to pretty much do whatever he wants, especially with this German behind him. And it looks like they have their sights set on this bottom lane turret, but so far, Prey, Snowflower have been clearing out that wave pretty well. Jax now pushing up the wave. Aurelia does know about Skarner being down there with Bono. See these trades are going heavily in favor of King. He picked yeah. up his own Trinity Force, has the red buff. You see an extra pickaxe for so on? 
but it's still not enough to win these trades. It's now the ultimate's coming out here. King in under the turret, looking for it. Oh. Blesses forward, gets the triumph, and will take that kill in the solo, but then Lava has to spoil his fun and clean up the mess. So ultimately, from a gold standpoint, will be advantageous for Han Wildlife to get the kill and the assist. So definitely not the end of the world. We'll take another quick look at this. And this was actually quite well done. Gingen ended up dodging the stun. He gets hit by the Aureli ultimate, but he just has so much damage and the red buff. And you can see right there, Flash comes out at the end. And then Lava, it was all in vain. He was there to pick up the kill regardless. Yeah, had to spoil the fun. Lava now 2-0-1 game. He's stacking up the gold so far. So that, right now, he's going to go up to this wave, and he should probably just push the next one and then begin. We're going Baron. Ooh. We're not wasting any time. We're 21 minutes in, and they know. Somehow, yeah. they, they got a read on this one. Throw out the Ezreal ultimate and say no. The interesting thing about this is, in theory, Hanwha Life, they figure that they have immunity from Baron damage because of the Lux ultimate and the open drake. So they can just constantly keep doing it without realistically taking damage. Doesn't matter how long it takes them. They have the Callista Rand. So as long as they end up going unspotted for a while, they can cheese it and try to sneak it. So Jax pushed the next wave after clearing the main wave up in top, and now he's pathing down toward. Never mind. He turned around. <laughs> I'm, I'm truly bad. Does that make you uh, I'm truly happy? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. It's like when you order chocolate ice cream and they give you vanilla. I mean, I'd be happy with that one. Chocolate ice cream is way too sugary. What? what? <laughs> it kind of, it leaves that taste in your mouth at the end. It tastes kind of good while you're eating it, but not not my favorite, Ellis. Is that like, is that like watching LCK at international events? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it does leave an awful taste in your mouth at times, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. Bono's just going to have to flash here. Not sure what he was doing. He was going for a walk. As KT, they're putting on a stand here at the Infernal Drink. They're down 4,000 gold, but they say, hey, we think that we can do this here. We can challenge. Jax actually has a natural oh, play. Oh, big ult. You see a giant two shot barrage through the entire team. And uh, that means that Hama Life is not going to step up and try to challenge it. And so the Infernal Dragon going over to KT, it neutralizes the Drakes. And speaking about equilibrium, an open Drake is spawning next, so maybe KT could get that. They'd be even on Drakes. And nice. the problem right now that Hanwha Life are in, or is in, is they got all the advantages early. They got the Herald. They got so many plates. They got the mid lane turret. They got the kills going on LeBlanc and the Aurelia. Everything was favoring them. And they can't do anything. Contrary to popular belief, champions do not deal <laughs> exorbitant amounts of damage and can magically oh, we're uh, accept okay. for LeBlanc. See you later. <laughs> That, uh, that's got to taste good for Lava. He's now got three kills. They need to get something off this, but the problem is the kill comes in on Ezreal, teleports him in. So you can't just start the Baron as if you just picked off a Skarner or a Nikali. they did it right away, but they're kind of... Still going to be risky. Jax has TP. Here. Here's the question. Will they start it here? Oh, yes, they man. will. Okay. No. Just kidding. Haha. <laughs> I think that what they're just trying to do, though, is bait it out. Yeah, they oh, are. Oh, they, they did Look it. Look at BDD. Takes a big binding to the face, and Snowflower is not going to stay alive. Goes down to the Ignite as well, and that Yumi will That's not Baron. stay alive this time. And as you said, they're now going to go for the Baron. And Ezreal is not even going to TP just to get closer faster. You're going to play this very careful. You can see that... It does take some time for the Baron to go down, and so KT. Look at TP. Aurelia. Coming in from behind, but Zohan is going to the left. KT actually going down. Looks like they want to give this one away. And with that Callista, it's not going to be an easy steal or anything yeah. like that. So it's going to go ahead and rend it at 1,300 even as he had so many stacks. And there you go. Baron already taken here by Helma Life in 25 minutes. And this is really good for them. Talked about how they need Baron to close out games, and they just had a series of very good events. Prey 
farming the wave really, really far up. There was no reason to farm the wave right there. The wave was coming in. There wasn't any wave meeting each, uh, each other. Oh my god. Oh my god. LeBlanc's damage. Korean fans love that one. As, uh, and this was a Kali. This was an excellent yeah. bait by Han Life. They know that they have all of the vision around the Baron. They can't actually do the Baron, but they can demand that KT try to check or try to get a confirmation. And KT did it a little bit recklessly and ended up getting punished for it. It was definitely rough. He kind of got caught. Someone had to check, and it was him. And now Bono's coming in, and uh, he's just going to say hello. Get away from the turret. We're going to take it now. This is our turf. I'm a life. Coming in here, had a really rough series against Sandbox, but that's what the nameplate's on, as Papa would say, right? It's it's Sandbox. They're a fantastic team. Hanwha Life had trouble against them. KT came in and stomped Jin Air again. That's another thing where you have to take a look at the nameplates and say, well, what does it really mean? Because Hanwha Life looked really good here up against KT. They're outplaying them at every step. I feel like yeah. they're playing their, their composition very well. Oh. And now uh, it's it's looking really good for Hanwha, at least in game number one. And this is one of the issues that the KT team comp has, is trying to resist against Baron is not the easiest task. And so a lot is going to be accomplished right now for Hanwha Life. And this game just keeps turning on its head every five minutes. And it does. You can see that uh, the four of them are standing on the mid turret and it goes down anyway. That's not really what you want to see. As the push is going on down in the bottom lane. Umti, that's a sad scorpion. Still not able to do much here for his team. Push does continue. Two cannon minions in the mid lane. One down at the bottom side doing a good job. Seeds is quite good. They have LeBlanc coming in and just dunking him down and pray. He is so dead here. He's going to flash away, but it's just followed up by Lava to dunk him down. And the Ezreal that's supposed to be so safe is just bait here for the side of Hanwha Life. This is definitely going to be two inhibitors at the bare minimum. Unless KT get a little bit frisky. Okay. Oh man, we're getting frisky. We're throwing forward key. He gets the binding, but it's not going to work out. Zip T was able to get away with the splash. They get the flash on Skarner, though. That is a really key summoner. Yeah. And so now they're just going to back off, reset, spend all the gold that they've piled up. An elixir, it looks like, was actually just purchased by Jarvan. And we take a look at this lava able to get in there and do so much damage to Prey. He ends up going down. The inhibitor was going to fall either way. There was no real way to hold off that push. And so now, Anwa, they'll turn all their attention towards the top lane. And this becomes a really easy way to close out the game. Now all they have to do is thread the needle. And uh, I think KT are going to think twice before they give Lava this LeBlanc. I mean, this guy set up the first blood. He's been picking off Prey over and over underneath turrets in the mid lane. It doesn't matter where Prey is. It's just dead meat every single time. And uh, it's been looking pretty easy for Hama Life now. They're up 9,000 gold going for the big push up on the top side. Don't even need Baron this time around. Composition is not really going to matter as this game gets very one-sided. Oh man, not the most damage out of the Lux. Doesn't have any ability power items really just yet. Game has not gone on long enough. You can see on my life, they're actually not getting the Ocean Dragon right away. And I really like this because it just ensures that if they do for some reason end up having to capture it, it's gonna force the Elder to spawn. Whereas had they eaten it sooner, would have caused another elemental dragon to spawn. Elise here now on to Oopsie. Final chapter as Yumi stuck there on the Skarner. Not able to do much. Sohan hopping forward. 
just, just a couple of bindings and extra damage, and just like that, Hamalife take out another inhibitor. We got Baron spawning in 45 seconds. They can make the Elder spawn as we were talking about. Hamalife are just sailing free, looking good. Yeah, this is a fantastic game state for them to be in right now. And I can't imagine a world where KT can actually come back from this. It would probably involve something going catastrophically wrong during a team fight and KT managing to get either the Baron or the Elder. <laughs> the stars have to truly align. But I'll, t I'll tell you one area where the stars are not aligning. The, uh, the Marill and Amicon on uh, BDD. That yeah. Stars aren't aligning gonna there. I mention it, but... Lux doesn't even have a theme yet. <laughs> There's not, there's not a lot of healing that you're stopping. Well, it feels like KT know Hama Life very well. They're very reluctant to get baited into this one again. But eventually it's going to come down to it. You don't have any inhibitors. And KT either have to force a fight or lose their base. This is quite difficult with the 7v5 enable. For those unfamiliar with that, Terminology, when you have all three inhibitors down, two super minions coming in from every lane, it practically takes two members to hold them off unless you have very specific champions, tens to seven versus five. That gives them the free Baron. They never got that ocean drink, so they don't really have the Elder spawning here. Yeah. But maybe if they go straight there, they can try to line it up with the next Baron if they do need it. Love the itemization, too. Out of Hanwha life. Lots of defensiveness. They recognize how far ahead they already are. You don't have to just keep adding on power. Because you're already dealing more than you should be in what one would consider a normal game or an even game. And so we're probably just going to get a Doom push coming in here. And it should be all but impossible for KT to hold it off. Yeah, they're not even going to kill the dragon. They're going to let little Open Drake survive. Open Drake the second here in this game. As we're just going to run it down mid. So that's what we're going for. All the super minions with the Baron. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty easy for Anwa here in this game number one. Looking good. Kind of looking like spring in terms of this matchup. But let's see how KT can do it. True Shot Barrage is going to be dodged by everyone. Another binding here onto the Skarner. This time, no stopwatch. And MT still alive, though. Kingen trying to get in the back line, but he's going 1v3. Already, the Skarner has died, and Kingen's going to go down, too. That should just be it. Everybody else on the side of KT is getting routed here and pushed back into the base. Four members already going down. Prey trying to do his best with Snowflower on his back, but they'll just pick up two extra kills and a very easy game number one will go the way of Hanwha Life. And that was pretty clean after they got the pick onto the Ezreal. Prey was farming the wave a little bit too far forward, didn't have vision on the left-hand side. Ended up getting picked off and then just snowballed out of control from there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely a big game for a lot of the guys here on the side of Hanwha Life. This looks entirely different for their game. Uh, up against uh, Sandbox, who of course is a very strong team, but it's definitely going to be up to KT to come back into this next one and try to prove everybody wrong. All the haters saying, hey, you defeated Jin Air, but how about a better team? What? what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. There is no better team, right? <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> game number one, they had a pretty good team composition. The Skarner was a little bit out of place. But for the most part, they had winning top lane, they had an extremely safe bottom lane, and Akali is reasonable, even though she is up against the Blanc in mid lane. So yeah. Skarner a little bit out there, doesn't make the most of sense. But nonetheless, I, I think that their draft was fine. The execution throughout the game is definitely frustrating, though. Absolutely. I mean, nobody really on the side of KT was able to get anything going, whereas that man there, on the left, standing up, he was the guy that got it going right from the first blood. Dominated his lane, bought him a Giants Soul Stealer. That earns him the MVP in my heart. And take a look at that damage. He was really the, the difference maker here in this game. Yeah, the Skarner 
right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Skarner. <laughs> that was close to three digits, okay? We were we were getting there, okay? 1,000, 1 1.0. What's the lowest damage that's ever been dealt? Six I feel 12. like... <laughs> really? I think so, yeah. I thought it's lower. Papa would know this. Uh... Maybe there was like a 400 one one time. I thought there was a 100 something. No, I don't think so. That really? would be insane. Really? In it a pro be. game, 100 I, damage? I think it. <laughs> Remove your QWER? Maybe I'm just getting a horror story. Like Maybe it was one of your old solo queue games or something oh like God. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's see if Hanwell Life can close it out 2 0 against KT or. Things are going to go well for them in game number two. I know one thing that's going to change going into game two. We're going to see LeBlanc banned, I think, 100%. But either way, guys, we'll find out after the break. ダメ、ダメ、ダメ、ダメ。ダメ、ダメ、ダメ。ダメ、ダメ、ダメ。ダメ、ダメ、ダメ。ダメ、ダメ、ダメ。ダメ、ダメ、ダメ。ダメ、